Happy Monday, everybody. Mm-hmm. And the award for my favorite headline of the week, a new type of homo unknown to science. Oh, I've heard about that. That's right. Uh, I heard about that on another podcast. Mm. And it's, uh, I just it's love definitely the title. An- Wait, I mean, <laughs> it feels uh, a couple <laughs> days late. <laughs> I like construction workers, but guys that shop at Lowe's, that's my thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. people, no way. No. Not for me. No, no, no. <laughs> We've never heard this before. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, ex- I've, I'm excited to hear about it because I've heard about it on another, on, uh, on a decidedly not science podcast. So yeah. it was a lot of, hey, you could really use this name on the schoolyard. Yeah. <laughs> for all your tall friends. Uh,. We are live. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's big. big text. I must have, oh, you know what? I changed it on. For a great night. I changed it on the server side, but did not change the URL. Oh, that's fine. Oh, we'll, we'll work with it. Moment. Hello, everybody. Oh, crap. Did you get rained on? Damn. The sky, it throws water at us. It, it does do that. Um, hello, everybody. We'll get started here in just a minute. Yeah. I feel like we can't talk about that book until no, until no. we know more. We're not talk. Can I look at it though? Because no, because then you'll just want to talk about it. No, and we've I, already established that you can't talk about it. Okay. Well, apparently you opened to some more interesting pages than I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can mention that the uh, fifth and final episode of uh, season one, season one of World's Greatest Con, is out now. Q and A. Uh, and and actually, I was I was worried that I w- it would feel like uh, I don't know uh, low effort content, and I, I I don't think it did. I think that they asked really good questions, and we gave really thoughtful answers. And there's a uh, unsolicited story about drinking with uh, a British intelligence attaches at a Warsaw embassy, inspired which... by uh, by <laughs> by this very story yeah that we're covering. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah a, a fun a fun story is told therein that includes many of my favorite topics including espionage and spoiled British people hello everybody spoiled 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 I asked I asked this during marbles but you guys know the um you guys know the the song poison by um, Bell Biv DeVoe. By Bell Biv DeVoe. That girl is poison. So, uh, did anybody else have this? This is in the this is in the same vein as the um, the conversation about uh, you're the best around. Yes. Did anyone else think that they were saying muy f- muy fine and not poison as a kid because they didn't know what the name of any song was? Muy fine. Muy fine, like Spanish. I I I was in muy high fine. School. Muy fine. Well, I I, no. I was in high school, so the the DJ uh. would say, "Here is the song Poison <laughs> by the band Bell Biv DeVoe," and uh, uh, so so I I, I, I don't suppose think I ever confused yeah. it for. However, okay. however, Bonnie oh, however. never knew uh, that uh, the lyrics to Beck's song "Loser." Were uh, uh, soy un perdedor, yeah. which is I'm Spanish a loser for I'm a loser. Spanish, yeah. mm. She, uh, she, I guess, never heard the introduction or spoke enough Spanish. She always thought the lyrics were soar over pandador. Oh, soar over pandador. She assumed being the World country. of Warcraft expansion, oh. of course, that she didn't know existed. I would, I would think maybe a, a panda themed luchador, but pandador as a country fits certainly. Panda themed luchador would be great. Would he would be. his finishing move would be to just sit on his enemy and everybody would begin to say, procreate, 
procreate. And then it's a very, it it's a very stern Chinese I, official I stood by. Soar over Panda Door. I imagine he's sitting over a trap door with a panda down there, and he's poking bamboo at your butt. Oh, oh. soar over Panda Door, like like a, a door for pandas. Oh, interesting. Okay. Anyway, so. Yeah, amazing. she's wrong. Uh, <laughs> dumb mistake. I'm glad we were able to reveal it. There was it a game on show based on that, like misheard lyrics. Yeah, well, there. I know there was a There's book a called "Excuse game. Me While I Kiss This Guy." Yeah, I I, I, yeah. I, I read that standing in in the book aisle. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's, it's one of the, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. Like, okay, you stole a book. Cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, no, it's no, like it was, you know, it was yeah. a, like a coffee table book yeah. of like, uh, oh, I'm sitting here. Gotcha. Oh, look at that. All right, you guys want to do some weird things? Yeah. All right. Uh, Andrew, I will count you down once you finish taking your drink, and I'll count you down. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen. We got some stories here, some interesting topics to talk about. And one is kind of like watching the process of science in action. Mm -hmm. And recently, a scientist announced that they think they may have found a, uh, a new species related to Homo sapiens. And they think that it's, they found this, I believe, in a cave in uh, Israel, which there's a lot of stuff in the Mediterranean all around that area. This was dated 140,000 to 120,000 years ago. What's interesting is it's a it's a it's a part of a skull, uh, no chin. Um, but I heard saw this came out. I'm like, cool. And they're like, hey, we think we found something new, and you know, we, this might be a new new species, whatever. There's a there's an exhibit at the Museum of the Rockies that uh, paleontologist Jack Horner put together, which is really good and it's helpful when you think about these things. It shows you these very different dinosaurs, very different dinosaurs. One that looks like a complete like a dragon skull, looks completely like a dragon skull. The other one's like kind of like the dinosaur that's got like that bone dome head. And he explains it's the same animal. It's just the different stages. One's when it's a child, one when it's a teenage years, and one when it's fully grown. And for years, they thought they were different species. And sometimes we find different fragments. And this was brought up by a couple of people online, like, how do we know this isn't like Denisovian? Because we found like teeth and some very small fragments of that. It could be a separate species for sure, but also it might be the other part of something that we hadn't seen before. So is the pre presumption that this is uh, uh, one, of, one of the things about uh, you hear from creationists is, uh, uh, oh, yeah, well, if we evolve from this, this, but how do you explain this gap? And then you find something that is in that gap. And they're <laughs> like, well, now there's two gaps to explain, sir. Yeah. Um, is, yeah. <laughs> is, is this another gap between us and our most recent relatives? Um, I mean, we don't know that it's it, the the problem is like, we got very fixated on that tree of like, then there's this branch, then there's this branch. Defining what's a separate species is more art than science, so to speak. You have to say it has a certain number of qualifying factors for it to be a separate one. And we're often just looking, and there's the morphology of looking at the bones, and then now we actually can use some DNA analysis in some cases. But it's really messy because you say you get a slight deviation there, but some of them still interbreeded with other people. And you're like, oh, is that a species that's different? Or are there three species, or is it one that's got some variations? And so, so it gets so complicated. I, I guess at what uh, one hundred fifty thousand years or so ago was, uh, I, I I don't know my my tree of man very well, uh, but but, but uh, I, I guess for some reason I was thinking that was more Homo erectus or Homo habilis or whatever, um, uh, uh, but or or, or Neanderthals. I, I, I do. Well, uh, yeah. Who else was around in, in this time is what I'm asking. So like Homo erectus, if you look at that, like we and Neanderthals and like Denzos, you'd probably be like an offshoot from there. Right. So you'd have like your, you go habilis for further back, then you'd go like erectus and then you would get, then you would get like further on there. Like we would share an ancestor, us Denos Denisovians and Neanderthals you know, would probably have shared, you know, like, you know, homo erectus ancestor. And you can see, so this is, in Brian, this is why it gets confusing. You know, Bryce pulled this, this graph up. Homo erectus lived 109, 
1.9 million years ago, 1.9 million years ago, up to 110,000 years ago. This is a range over oh, a million wow. and a half years. Good Lord. And overlapping with Homo sapiens, with Homo, with, with Neanderthals, with Denisovians at the same time. And that's the crazy thing that we will hear all oh, the interbred, like, yeah, like most of our history, for most of human history, there have been a bunch of other dudes walking around that were different species different species not races or ethnicities or religious groups or you know uh guilds uh but literally different species and sometimes we could you know a lot of them though we could interbreed with them so, so we're looking Bryce at, is showing we're us looking at a graph. chart now that within the last million years you had uh uh it's hard for me to read that at this distance and about seven different species homo Nalet naleti Hadelberg. Genesis, Bergensis, yeah. sap, uh, Sapiens, Erectus, Neander, Talensis, uh, Floris, Florisensis, and Luzonensis. So, so seven if, different species in the past million years. Uh, if 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 this does prove to be another branch of the tree, then these are these are uh, another cousin that belongs with the uh, the six others that we eventually crushed. Yeah, and what we find in the case of First, you know, oh, look at this Neanderthals. Oh, wither the Neanderthal. And then we genetic, we discovered genetic testing. Like, oh, yeah, if you've got European ancestors, you got Neanderthal in you. They didn't quite go away. And then we discovered the Denisovians, which is another group distinct from the Neanderthals that were pretty widespread and made their way through Asia. Like, oh, wither the Denisovians, those poor people. And then we look at DNA from people in parts of Asia. Oh, no, yeah, no, their, their grandchildren are here. And so, like, because interbreeding, and so that's part of what happens is this assimilation. That's crazy. And so, so what what is the next steps to figure out whether or not maybe we're just uh, 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 misclassifying what these artifacts are? So the researchers found this. They say, no, this is a distinct thing. We're calling this Dragon Man. And who wants to get rid of Dragon Man? Nobody. So other research, yeah, other researchers will look at this. They'll do comparisons. Uh you know, and we'll figure out like, you know, if what, you know, we'll figure out like uh, how much closer is this to other things? Is it closer to Denisovians? You know, what's it related to? And it might be a distinct, it might be just another, you know, we're finding it's way more messy than we realized. I mean, that's where my bet would be in general, right? <laughs> you know, the yeah. higher, the higher fidelity we understand life, the more complicated and messy it's going to be. And, you know, you think about, Prior to, once you had things like shipping, once you had things like boat, you know, being able to transport by sea and be able to go very long distances, it was really hard for genes to go very far. And then, you know, you have this all of a sudden explosion and genes go very far. If you go to, if you go to places like, like, let's say Shanghai, people there look a little bit more uh, like their, like their genes came from start some some people there look at they have some genes that came from you know parts of europe etc you go to other ports and you see this sort of thing or communities like this you know you look at america which we're just all these different people coming from different places and you see you know it's it's hard to sort of like you know define like like brian are you like full up irish you german what are you uh i yeah I we've all up... been betting on it I grew yeah. up being told that I was mostly English with a, a, a few extra spices on the side. But according to, I finally did an Ancestry.com thing. Uh, I was much more Scandinavian than I was previously told. Um, uh, much less English than I was previously told. So really, it, uh, I, I found out that I'm mostly one-third English, one-third Irish, and one-third Scandinavian, hmm. give or take, with, with, a, with a little spice of... Um, uh, uh, like I don't know, like a five percent of uh, uh, Italian in there somewhere. No, that's a good a meatball. Uh, that's uh, that's our phrase. Mm -hmm. That's one percent. Oh, let of me his show you, man. I can say I can actually. Southern Italy is in my ancestry, so oh, okay. I can use okay. that. Uh, Sorry, we go. yeah, uh, I, I'm allowed. That's our phrase. I'm allowed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. We turn on the Sicilian. <laughs> I'm allowed. Okay, so I, I am allowed. Uh, that that's really that like, that's gonna be the thing. How dare you? Oh no! Uh, today just got the new DNA test. I'm allowed. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I uh, did some mRNA and then I did a I actually did a retroviral. In fact, you know, did some you know Cas9 uh, transplanted. Some are genes are, 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 you, are you comfortable sharing what what your heritage turned out to be? Oh yeah, sure. Let me pull it up. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you do we are we going to compare Neanderthal ratios too? Uh, I I I assumed I didn't have much. I didn't see. I I should probably go back. That that's one of the neat things is as they continue to make connections and and you know on the one hand the privacy person in me is horrified that that some corporation is collecting everybody's backlogs and oh, they what will tell you and both twenty three and me and ancestry will tell you and I've actually had conversations with people that work there that uh, they are meticulous about not turning over any records. Uh, even when compelled by law enforcement or government. Uh, now, unless are, you're the Golden State Killer. There are other sites. No, 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 no. <laughs> Golden State Killer got popped because once you have your information from Ancestry or 23andMe, there are other sites that can then also do for free mm -hmm. uh, other filling in of public records. And that's where the Golden State Killer got popped. Ah, I see. So it was it was another site on top of the information that you already like. Yeah. It, it did twenty four in me, and that's really you where you do. Stop. Yeah, anywhere anywhere over twenty three. Twenty three is the right number. And, you need, uh, you are usually. you are got you've gotten got. But uh, uh, yeah, though that's that's where the Golden State Killer wound up screwing up. He wanted he wanted just that much more, and law enforcement was like in your face. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> So I have a, let's share of mine, 99.8% um, uh, Northern, Northwestern European. So mm -hmm. uh, there you go with that. Uh, I am 66.3% uh, British and Irish, 25.4% Scandinavian, 2.9% uh, French and German. Uh, and it changed, by the way. My mother's the one at the Italian. It's no longer there. I don't have it. I apologize profusely. Uh, I apologize. What? I apologize okay. profusely for that. Wow. So even DNA changes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, 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 well, and I was Ashkenazi. I was like 0.2% Ashkenazi Jewish for a while. Then it got taken away from me. And I, mm. I you know, huh. I am now. You ready for this? Go. Bump, bump, bump. 0.2% Peninsular Ara Arab. Oh my God. Uh, oh, I, I knew it. Wow. I knew it. Okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> Listen, we're going to be some changes here. And, uh, <laughs> that's I don't know. Uh, that's far enough. That's Mr. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. But that's the funny thing because like it will as they get better because like they looking you know they're looking at uh, they look for mutations that are common within certain groups and they think we think this mutation started here then you trace it back further find out like no that's actually common the haploid groups what they're called and then you find out oh it might be somewhere else so for some time you might be like oh I'm part this and then ah oh, you took it away I was already. <laughs> I already bought the clothing. <laughs> Do you feel like, uh, 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 Justin, have you done one of these also? I mean, I don't, you don't need the results, but because uh, uh, I have my, not. My, my wife did. Yeah, but I don't have the, I don't have the results handy. So so my question to Brian and Andrew is like uh, post receiving those results, have they have it? Has it impacted your life in any way? Like uh, may, maybe this is not even really a weird thing. I, 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 I've, I've been working I know you've on brought it up. Irish accent. Uh, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, it it it's um uh, I don't know it's satisfying, but I mean here's the problem is it's familiar in that, uh, Brian at age ten. Where did I come from, mom and dad? Here's a definitive answer. Cool. Don't think about it for ten years, yeah. twenty years. Uh, Ancestry.com. Where did I come from? Here's a definitive answer. Cool. Don't think about it. Five years later. Also, all those are changing. We're learning. It's an emerging science. Mm. Cool. cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's really all I got. You know. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not a. As we've talked about before, I'm not a huge fan of tribalism in general. I, I prefer most people to think about the fact that we're all humans, or at least all inhabitants, conscious inhabitants of planet Earth. And you know, I, 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 I don't, I don't worry too much about it. Yeah, it didn't. The thing that that was the kind of effect is my mother was adopted, so yeah. half of half of my family tree we kind of had a pretty you know, we were pretty meticulous about certain details, so it wasn't a big surprise. But that was on my mother's side was to figure out like, oh, what are we there? Man, pretty much the same thing on the other side. So uh, boring. <laughs> um, do you have a? Do you have your Neanderthal percentage? Uh, I'm trying to look it up. Uh, unfortunately. Um... 
the uh, they'll, t- uh, they'll actually tell you the percentage of like Neanderthal. Neanderthal, yeah. Wow. I, I, unfortunately, I, I'm de- <laughs> I could very easily tell you how much of Bonnie is Neanderthal <laughs> because <laughs> that's what account happens to be logged in. Uh. Uh, <laughs> which, which uh, so so give give me a second to see if I can find my login and I'll and I'll and I'll be happy to to Justin, let you know. We're gonna take bets. I'm gonna say one percent. Wait, that Brian is one percent. Is one percent Neanderthal? Wait, no. Are we betting? Because Andrew, do you know yours? Yeah, I guess I we do. I don't know where it went here. I guess okay. we don't know a so scale. Wait, no. So but... let's just go either Brian or Andrew. Who's more oh, Neanderthal? Who's got more Neanderthal? Ooh, uh, that's who's tough. Dropping you've, the thaw. You've the known them longer than rating. me. Uh, I I bet. Ooh, I I think I'm gonna. See Say Brian. Oh, I think it really? might be Brian. I'll, I'll take Andrew. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. For 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 muscular bone structure reasons that are <laughs> almost Jimmy the Greek level offensive, uh, I will I will take Andrew. All right, listeners yeah. at home, register I'm, your register your vote now. I'm gonna have to do a full uh, password reset right here, real, but, but uh, wow. yeah, I suspect it'll be worth it. We'll okay. see. Uh, yeah, listeners at home, uh, uh, register your vote on. Dun dun dun. The yeah, because Maine Maine's got kind of a loping walk. Like he's 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 got a very like uh uh he's got a gait that that mm. the more I've I've been around humans I'm like mm, maybe not one of us maybe he's carrying <laughs> he's carrying the mother load I, I heard of at one point yeah there was sort of a ridiculous uh I I'm certain it was not very scientific but uh based on um uh, 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 descriptions in books somebody was asked they hired a voice actor. To recreate what a Neanderthal would sound like, mm-hmm. and it was just an annoying, nasally, screechy. I'm a Neanderthal, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm almost certain this can't be right. Yeah. And later on, read <laughs> that no, it was indeed not correct. I have mine. I have mine in front of me, so I'll wait for Brian. And uh, we'll do. Okay. So yeah, I may take a, a second here, but let me let me. Oh, yeah. there we go. Reset so. my password. There we go. Okay. Well, here, uh, uh, Andrew, why don't we have you reveal yours, and then and, and then uh, Brian will reveal his, and ah. this will be our grand weird things Neanderthal face off. It's uh, it's uh, uh it's the speciesist contest we've ever had. All right. So, uh, Andrew, your Neanderthal percentage is what? My Neanderthal percentage is 2%. I have more Neanderthal DNA than 55% of other oh, customers. Wow. Right. Number that's, one, wow. Totally nailed it. I'm feeling <laughs> extraordinarily uh, uh, sure mm-hmm. of it because out of, uh, out of 2,872 variants, I have 280 variants from so, Neanderthals. So that's kind of middle of the road. You're, you're an average, I mean, they say 55%. So you're, you're, you're kind of close to that median there of, um, of, of percentage. I don't know. You yeah, still feel I mean, I'm saying uh, one, like that's, but that's one, everybody on the planet, Bryce. Well, oh, no, they're remember, customers. Everybody, everybody, remember also, it's like, yeah, if your ancestors left Africa, you got Neanderthal in you. If they stayed there, mm. then you stayed pure, <laughs> and pure. you yeah. didn't get you know diluted. Okay, man, this is a conversation as scientific as it is dangerous. <laughs> okay, it? here uh, we go. Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right I'm, here I'm, we go. I'm Brian. at least logged in. So hold on, wait a minute. We we're at two percent. Two percent for 2% Andrew. Two percent uh, uh, for. Andrew, Brian, where, now where, where, big where do reveal. I want to go to what under the DNA tab here? Is that where I want to look? It it tells me, by the way, there's genetic. Yeah. If you go into like the bigger ancestry report, DNA um, results see, sur- sur- uh, story. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, six, an unga six, bunga 61%. Oh, geez. 61% England and Northwestern Europe, uh, 17% Germanic Europe, four other reason, uh, regions. Um, no, that's not what we want. We don't care about these these modern yeah. these constructs we want this we want we want the the real the real juice if you real. click click Ooh, on that sauce. tab down here brian okay. uh oh no he's on sorry. he's on the yeah. desktop he's on yeah he's on the he's on, on a, a mobile on, web on a laptop situation so they they actually mention what those traits are associated with the, the by the way with uh, uh neanderthal what or? those genes mean oh okay uh okay well um hmm Hmm. Hmm. I don't know where to find Neanderthal on this front page here. You, you, you search. Let's get a type in. My guess is if you've got a report. 
or uh, um, lower your ethnicity. Sure. Would, would you like to hear what those traits I inherited mean, though? The significance yes. to them? Yes. Okay. Uh, RS1309709, that one. Uh, trait, fear of heights. Oh. Okay. Well, now, would you say well, that that is an accurate that? trait? I would. I, I like to climb trees and stuff, but I would say that I've had nightmares about heights. Oh. RS1566479, uh. also fear of heights. Ah, ooh. But then RS1364405, which we know why this is all BS, uh, says... Uh, Fear of the ground. No, sense of direction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so your ancestors, Andrew, were ground-based and also did not really know where they were going. Okay. Or no, they, they did know where they were going. You're... They, mm, I, I have a maybe a sweat during a workout. Yes. <laughs> I think people just do I don't that. I don't know where to that. go to find out how Neanderthal I am. <laughs> and there, there doesn't. I mean, I, I, I'm going to type in the word, search all collections, and I'll type in the word. Nope. Do you uh, have a button people. that says Ancestry, Brian? Like a button that get, takes you to an Ancestry tab? Uh, well, uh, that's the name of the site, so it just takes me to the front page. Um, You're, which site are you on? Ancestry.com. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know how to do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, you guys used competing services. Ah, oh. so it might be that, that they don't do that. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, cool. Here, you guys uh, do the Patreon plug. Maybe I'll find Oh, it. hey, man. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you go if you want to support this show. Uh, if you head over there right now, we'll be waiting for you. Well, at least mm -hmm. pictures of us will be, and we'll be Open staring arms. right into your soul, which is definitely a real thing you can find out on Ancestry.com or uh, 23andMe. What you want to do is give us money, uh, because money makes the world go round and this podcast happens. So if you go to Patreon.com slash Weird Things, not only will you get the satisfaction of supporting a show that you really that you really like, but also... You are going to get uh you're you're gonna get the the after, after things, things podcast, podcast before anybody else. So why don't you head over on over there right now? Patreon.com slash weird uh, things. Weird things. <sighs> Frequently asked questions. Does the ancestry DNA test show Neanderthal? The answer is no. Mm. Andrew wins. Andrew, that means uh, yeah, I guess I Andrew win. wins. I'll collect my fifty dollars, Bryce. Uh thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Well, there we go. Well, I feel like I just bared something, and then you guys <laughs> I, I, just like, uh, I could, I would. I, 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 and blame ancestry. I'll show you mine, world. If they'll show theirs. Uh, now yeah. I'm gonna be judged differently, being a Neanderthal. I always being Arab. That. I, that I feel was an like easy one. Yeah. yeah sloping criminal brow uh gentlemen yeah um i i'm very proud of this country because they've made it into the headlines for weird things for a while back and i would say they took felt like they took kind of a back seat for over a decade okay but they're doing they're doing weird and cool stuff again i'm talking about japan oh wow oh okay Japan's getting weird with it now. 2021, uh, Japan's getting weird yeah, with it. Yeah, uh, about to have the eyes of the world descend upon it for the uh, for the Tokyo Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah, but anyhow, let's talk about something that's interesting. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just for the Olympics this year. It just feels like like it's it uh, weird. let's have like a back to school party on the second day. Like ah, uh, we're like kind of just here, it's just adjusting. Then mm -hmm. we're going to go do this. But also trying oh, to be but... peak human physical specimens at the same time. It's really it's really yeah. a mental uh, uh, event this year more than a physical one. Uh, we're going to find some either pe people spend a lot of time training or a lot of time Netflix and chilling. <laughs> yeah. Well, or, wouldn't it be or, great or, if our or, numbers or... were just like the worst ever? <laughs> like like <laughs> if it was just like, <laughs> eh, I mean, hilarious eh. for us, terrible for the athletes. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, copyright is interesting. Japan has some interesting copyright law because Japan is, you know, like the United States, is a company country that makes a tremendous amount of copyrighted material, exports to parts of the world, and so their laws can be um, 
more severe than other places. They recently arrested three people for uploading. You, Bryce, you heard about this? I have not. I know that Japan does have very strict online piracy laws because it used to be much easier for me to get all the little J-pop music that I listened to in high school. And now it is very, very difficult. So we're going to guess they were uploading to YouTube. What were they uploading? Pictures of Bryce. <laughs> oh, oh the goodness. Famous, ding, ding, ding. The famous That's the right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It is the newest passion of Nihon. Pictures of Bryce Castillo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so, so the obvious selections are music and movies. Um, he said to YouTube, right? Yep, YouTube. Would it be some kind of like live performance? Because here in America, there's an expectation that like if you're doing a thing and somebody grabs a photo of it, then That's, you, you yeah. own that copyright. Right. We don't have like a big concert DVD uh Bootleg. sector yeah, or yeah. even industry here in america versus japan where it's very systematized um so so i'm gonna say i'm gonna say personal cell phone videos of a live event uh, okay i'm gonna okay. say something video game related mm. because uh you know a lot of the big uh, uh companies are either you know have gigantic uh, uh bases in japan or uh uh you know are based in japan themselves and also Streaming culture is very big over there, so and and it's a lot easier to get your hooks into some of the government element. So that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, we we know Nintendo is very. I mean, for years Nintendo's had intensely litigious, and, very yeah, strong. And they, and they do stuff at home policy. before they start trying to bring it over here. Yeah, um, that's that's a good guess. Um, I would say if I hadn't already looked this up uh, just a minute ago and seen, I would have guessed something Neanderthal <laughs> DNA reports. I would have guessed something breaking out of the video medium so maybe like people are putting like manga pages as like frames in a video and then you scut through the video and you watch you, maybe you watch uh, the comic book in that way interesting uh i never would have guessed this at all fast movies Sorry? Oh, those, Andrew. Fast movies. Of course. Oh, we are so stupid. Oh, we are so dumb. My oh, God. Stop bidding yourselves, guys. What uh, an ingenious concept. So they upload <laughs> super fast versions of movies now that YouTube has built in slow motion things so you can upload a full movie. Oh, is that what it is? And no, then slow it no, down? No, 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 no. no. I, it looks no, like they're highly no. edited. Oh, they're edited. Yeah, clips yes. and still images to provide brief summaries of movies and are edited without the permission of the copyright holders. Yeah, th uh, there wow. was here in America around the year 2000, I want to say one of the mid mid tier cable television uh, channels like TNT or whatever, they, they, they would do, um, uh, I think they called it 30 minute movies where they would yes. buy the license yeah. and then they just chop it on down like just the good stuff. Here's, here's all of Die Hard in 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? And and I so was I, I, did I, here. I, I, and and I remember thinking, number one, that's genius. Number two, that's got to be really expensive to pay for the whole license and then cut out two thirds of it and then jump yeah. it down to thirty minutes. To not, yeah, that seems an odd play for a television network that is dependent on advertising. And so theoretically, you want the entire movie so you could sell more advertising, right? It. But I, instead, you only get one third of the length of the movie. Hmm. Well, okay. uh, sometimes. You maybe like you get them a catalog or what the movies were, and it's just it's like look at Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, you know the the the, the prices on the movies. They that might have been a situation where yeah, you got it cheaper yeah. if you if you represented it in one way or another. Wow. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, they edited them down to ten minutes, and and I'm like, well, I mean, that, that I'd be curious to see like in Japan, that's now a criminal offense. Wow. Um, we're here, that would be like civil, and it'd be curious to see what would happen because. That's a very um I, I depend on copyright for my livelihood, but I also understand there's such thing as derivative and transformative and other sorts of doing works and stuff. So I'd be very curious to see they're like video crews filming these guys after they've been arrested, like they've been count like perp walked. Like this, yeah, due to this head down, whatever. Oh, what did you do? 
Well, so, you know, I took my neighbor Totoro and edited it down to the 10 minutes of the best part. Then what'd you do? What put on YouTube? Then what? YouTube no, that, that was it. Got all those okay, thumbs up. So question, where might the line be considered? And I'm not saying I have a take on this one way or the other, but I know for a fact that on Red Letter Media, they'll do uh, 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 rewatch videos uh, or rewind or uh, review. 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 Yeah. Where uh, they will be 90 minute long breakdowns. And pretty much it's just them describing the entire movie as they saw it and what they thought of various parts of it. And then they'll show a clip here, a clip there, a clip there. Um, would, would this eventually theoretically, like, like, uh, like let's say the new Godzilla movie comes out and then, and then I press record and for the exact total runtime only describe in vivid detail, maybe showing a photo here or there of these actual scenes, what the movie was like, would that be crossing the line? Would that be, would, no, I, would, would I, I be getting a well, point? And are we talking about a moral or a legal line or I, I, legal? I mean, well, yeah, we're, we're focusing it, on legality here. One, it is hard to predict how things we interpret it, so that we'll put that out there. Like we could say, oh yeah, this makes sense, and we find it clearly transformative. You you are describing your experience. You are describing what you thought of this. You're describing the movie. You are not taking literally the movie itself and. And I would say I would say that it, were this to take place in the United States, these people may have an argument that this was transformative because yeah. they made it ten minutes. They didn't. It's not the full thing. But then the argument, I think, well, there's no commentary to it. It's no this. But how is that different than somebody making a fan taking a movie and making a fan trailer that's two minutes? What's that limit? When does it become? Yeah. Oh, you know, totally. I think I think that they're you know, a, a clever lawyer would say that the transformational element of it was what they decided to cut. What they felt was a. Uh, uh, you know, the, the core story and, and what was superfluous. Uh, yeah, I obviously look, uh, uh, Japan's got their own uh, way that they look at those kinds of copyright things, but I do find fascinating what we would hold the line on in terms of uh, uh, what is legally actionable. In, in fact, I'm kind of surprised. I'm sure these things, these, these kinds of folks do exist, but uh, literally just having, there have been movies or, or, uh, you know, I guess in the nerd genre for which I would, I like it when the conversation about the movie is almost about the length of the movie, if not longer. Right. Like I, I was excited for red letter media to talk about uh, of the rise of Skywalker because I, I enjoyed that as much, if not more than watching the movie itself, because I didn't like it. And I knew that they would skewer it uh, expertly. Uh, but I, I do wonder whether or not there is just a a spot for somebody who's not even reviewing it, who's literally just saying, okay, so we open on Hawkeye's ranch and he's there with his family. And then next thing you know, he comes back and his family's not there. That pretty much brings us to the opening credits and literally just tells a story like he was at a bar of, uh, of, of a movie. That is, that is a fascinating concept. This is uh, dangerously close to uh, home considering the uh, podcast project that we just put out <laughs> where it's, it's meant to capture the voice of somebody sitting at the end of the bar, accurately telling, but you're well, telling a real life. That's... You're telling a, a story that a, a nonfiction story. I, I almost wonder if what you did, if in the scenario where you took 90 minutes to describe a movie yeah. as it was playing out in more or less real time, I do think you probably wouldn't get hit on like a uh, fair use or, or what have you, you'd probably, if it was like a target, you, you would probably have a target on your back for, uh, I, I don't know, story or, or like well, actual thematic elements being lifted and, and, and stolen. But then you kind of get into, um, you know, you get into Hollywood and all the way that you know, you know, story I'll, and scripts are handled there. I'll tell you what, for, for a while, this was a very respectable trade in the blogging world. Like television recappers were a massive part of the late aughts and early, early tens. I guess blog culture was really big, but like television without pity, a lot of like big writers that are like big media writers now got their start writing recaps for shows that were basically what I just described. Just just walking through like, here's what happened on Lost like uh, you know, maybe some snark here and again if there was some element that the, a fan community was into or not into, but it was basically just recapping things and uh, uh, 
I, I do remember even then uh, television creators having a bit of a mixed mind of like, all right, is this a reason why people won't watch the show or is this indulging only the most hardcore fan that not only wants to watch the show, they then also want to read about it the, the, the day after or they want to read about it and then know which episode they want to watch. Yeah, and I think, too, like you look at when Disney was putting out Star Wars films and some of the other Marvel stuff, they produce a lot of their own recap content now, too. Like, they have, like, a, a series that goes into the history of, like, different Marvel characters. So, like, this is like, oh, I want to watch this. Well, who's Vision? Oh, okay, watch this six-minute video. Now you know or recap that stuff. I I think it's a delightly – I think it's a fascinating form. Like, and I could think, like, man, I mean, there's movies I'd love. It might be fun to watch, like, a 10- or 15-minute fast version of it, too. Yeah. Because it, if you've seen it, then the nostalgia triggers work, and it'll play differently. So uh, I'm curious to see where this goes in Japan. Curious to see what happens. But uh, uh, to dial back to the <laughs> the real novel part, criminal, huh? Not Not a civil penalty. A criminal crime. Straight to jail, Brian. Straight to jail. Those Japanese, man, they, they don't uh, fart around when it comes to throwing people in jail. Yeah, they're, uh, we'll see what happens. But like, yeah, that's a, it's here. Like you, I could see that causing a bit of an outrage. Um, and it happened in the Miyagi prefecture, by the way. Mm. Remember that time Daniel was yeah, for- back there? Crazy. First time these kinds of arrests have happened in Japan, but apparently back in 2012 they uh, made some, you know, made them into more, you know. I mean, we have, you know, you can if you're doing distribution stuff here through that can be criminal, but the idea of to do something that's, tr- you know, obviously transformative, but again, maybe not enough. I don't know. Um, seems kind of harsh. The films edited. I am a hero. Owned by Toho and Cold Fish. Mm, any, classic. any, any, any fans here? Uh, of Cold Fish. Yeah, prequel uh, to Big Fish. Mm, they eventually mm, splintered mm. off and became Cold Play. <laughs> it's all true, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's why you come here for facts. That joke was so, Bad Fish, the band. You know, uh, with a ph. <laughs> <laughs> You ever feel like, man, I'm happy to do the show, but I'm I'm wearing a hat because I don't want to comb my hair. And uh, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to turn on the lighting. Do I want to have to, like, I don't know, like, groom, take care of myself? <laughs> Maybe I just want to lay in bed like, you know, some fat vampire from Blade and just, you know, spend the rest of my time there. What I'm trying to say is, what? <laughs> what? Don't judge me. I'm getting these looks from these people. Of like, like it's just a very languid description. It just, uh, it just feels very lived in. Is all I'm saying. Already one of the <laughs> easiest jobs on the planet. Uh, <laughs> it could be easier. It's like, I'm I'm just, like we, remember, we are, remember. we are getting a description that is accurate down to every speck of Cheeto in your chest hair. <laughs> What I'm, what I'm saying, uh, before all this judging took place, all of this lifestyle shaming happened. Who, who said the is... fat vampires from Blade? Who said that one? That oh, was, that were there fat vampires? Oh, yeah. Were no, okay. there's that one really fat one that was just eating Pearl. all the blood. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just torture it with like using the ultraviolet like yeah. take that harvey weinstein like ah! it's, just, it's it's hilarious but it's cruel it's very very cruel <laughs> go pull that up bryce pull that up i don't want to get thrown into japanese jail yeah. for sure <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, your punishment let the punishment fit the crime feed him yeah. blood begin the uv lights <laughs> I, 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 i'm a podcaster I get out of bed. <laughs> i'm just saying all right uh, uh, fine but, Kemp. yeah i'm getting to the story here yeah <laughs> yes a sl- I sent Bryce the link, and mm-hmm. uh, there's some new research. Basically, one-shot free view and neural talking head synthesis for video conferencing. Um, 
one shot basically means that it doesn't it's a pre-trained network or whatever and you just give it one example of like if somebody moving or whatever and what we're looking at is basically you're giving it like a photo or just like a couple photos of a person's face and it's able to map that onto or adjust in real time and create a synthetic talking head so they're showing like uh the original footage he's talking kind of at a at a at a side angle but they can actually change the you can see you can actually have pitch yaw and roll controls and rotate the head looking a little more straight on uh, versus the kind of three quarters angle it begins with. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And so this would be like a plug in for a Zoom or a Skype or something. I I I think eventually it'd get there in the short term. It seems like this would be very very useful for VR ramifications, where it's just like take some photos and then, you know, give give us a decent look at your face and we'll just map it on there. Fine. For telepresence. Yeah, uh, the the ones that are described in this model here are the these ones here on the end, um, and they're they're showing kind of a couple of different styles uh, that I guess are like. Um, GAN based because you know some of these look like the uh, you know this person does not exist sort of effect. Right. Yeah. Um, but I I think it's it, it looks really fascinating. They can even do it with um, I guess they can change the body. Um, so they're kind of seeing showing a, a a fella whose actions get mapped onto a, a female uh, 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 avatar. Avatar. Yeah. And what it so it gets what gets really interesting is so you're able to just it kind of real time kind of is able to synthesize this you know basically look at the image whatever and create this version of the person that looks pretty realistic and can change the angle. Also for compression, they have an example in there where they show you how they're using this method of being able to synthesize what your head or position without changing the position, but comparing how good this is at compressing the talking head down. Oh, that's interesting. So instead of having video compression, you would give it some amount of video data or image data and have it, the computer unpack that and cre generate the image rather than mm -hmm. generate so, from so compressing video. Wow. This this could be all client-side stuff. So imagine yeah. CNN has whatever expensive servers there are, and they're all like, just send us four headshots and don't even you know, show up in your PJs. You'll look great, Mr. President. And then... And sure enough, he does. And based on on this uh, this display that we're looking at, their version of of doing this versus H two six four, which is a very common video uh, compression, uh, the H two six four is almost five times um, as big as using their uh, self built decompression stuff, which is a lot. I mean, that's a significant amount of bandwidth. I mean, when you know when we talk about like when the beginning of the pandemic happened and the internet kept going down, it's because Everybody was video calling. Now, if you shrunk that to you know one fifth of the size, suddenly suddenly you open up a lot of bandwidth options. I mean, imagine if Netflix was using this to just hey ge generate your stream, and it will cost us a lot less. It will cost a lot less bandwidth. We know Netflix is the biggest user of bandwidth on the planet right now, more or less. Um, this fast. Yeah, the challenge the challenge would get in. Like this is really good for like because they, they use this technique can do three things. It can one is it can lower the bandwidth cost because it just it takes like ten percent of the data. They can change the rotation. They can also transfer, so you could put your face on somebody else's face. Um, the on uh, to Bryce your point, you could certainly use it for that, and there are algorithms that you can do that with. The problem is is that when it really starts to make up stuff. And that's where you're going to get kind of people complaining about the fact that like, ah, oh, this background is a different background than what I saw or this or that. And so, but there are algorithms that can be, mm -hmm. do a pretty good job of that. But it is, it is, that'll get into, you know, like this is a technique where it's kind of like, ah, oh, does it look like me? Is it acting like me? Is it seem pretty good? Sure. But you know, when Christopher Nolan looks at this, like, no, that smoke trail went the other way. Yeah. This is crap. Yeah. But I will I'm, say we have bits where we're accept uh, where we're accepting this. Um, I believe it's uh, mm. DLSS. Is that right? No, that can't be it. Um, in in gaming, there's a an, a an RTX technology. I think it's RTX where mm -hmm. you can say, "Hey, I'm gonna play this video game. I'm gonna render it at 1080p resolution," and this technology can can upsample that much like we've seen with like you know um, taking a photo and generating new sharper details to it. They do that in real time with gaming. So you could say, hey, I'm rendering a 1080p image, but now the graphics card is going to up this to a 4K image 
or mm-hmm. to whatever uh, whatever output you'd like and it's it is create it's painting new pixels i mean it's 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 creating detail that is not there but it also is means that resolutions can go way up relatively easily yep 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 i, I think that yeah i think gaming's obviously a big place for this too and, and i'm not saying that it's, you know we're gonna we're gonna see you know these ml algorithms more and more in video too um it's just you're gonna get and that's i think we're gonna see a discussion about like oh i compare i compared the still of this you know version of you know army of the dead to this army of the dead and you've ruined it yeah uh picks uh yeah dude um i i'm gonna give a qualified pick oh uh, in that in that i don't <clears throat> know what everyone else's experience is going to be like but i went in with no expectations and no idea what i was about to watch so if you can do that i had a very very good time watching the tomorrow war uh with chris pratt that's a amazon prime original um it was um, I, I, I enjoyed it mainly for the surprises and I, 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 I'm so thankful that I hadn't seen a single trailer or had even the slightest idea what it was about and that's a, that was a rare gift and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've heard I, I have heard good and bad things about it and I, I also haven't watched a trailer and I'm trying not to let um, let those opinions just you know, taint my uh how i will perceive it but um but it is a weird thing because it's i'm I'm seeing a lot of both i'm seeing this is kind of just a dumb version of another movie or this is actually just like a fun time so uh, i i I think in a parallel universe where there was enough billboards enough super bowl ads enough hype before it that that there was a general sketch of what you're walking into then yes i think i i Mm. might have paid twenty dollars to watch this movie and then hated it in the theater but thankfully we live in this timeline where i knew nothing about it and i was like are they really going to oh my god they are i was like is this wait are they doing the <laughs> well i'll be you know and uh and oh, that's fun and, and i enjoyed it very very much um uh, jk simmons is in it uh Ooh. you got uh oh uh, um uh, mary lynn rathscub is in it uh chris pratt of course uh, it's uh, I, I liked it quite a bit it's very funny. You're listing off names, and the the one name that I know is in it is Mike Mitchell, who's one of the Doughboys podcast guys. Oh no, that's, kidding. that's all. The, that's all the people that, that, in the opinions that I've heard. I bet Mike. I bet Mitchell earned like a good bit of money on that. Uh, yeah. Uh, from what I understand, they spent like two hundred million dollars on it, and it was intended for theaters. And uh, instead, it gets to be a surprise on, on your Amazon feed. But but only watch it if it's going to be a surprise. Uh, I, I caught up with the first two episodes of the most recent season of Rick and Morty. Uh, I love them. They're great. <laughs> uh, I like uh, uh, both of the episodes. I, I, I feel like maybe one of the renewed things that they wanted to do in this season was really kind of double down on the uh, uh, sci-fi element like make their make their sci-fi plots a little more muscular and a little less reverential like even when the show uh, last season i think had a tendency to kind of slip a little bit too far into the world of like look at us we're writing a show and every once in a while we're going to point out that we're writing a show where we're going to talk about writing or blah mm-hmm. blah blah this uh is is a lot more uh at least in the first two episodes that i saw things were about the premise and the plot and then the like fun writery asides were kind of on you know they were the 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 spice and not the meat uh that's a metaphor uh, i loved oh thank you i get it uh i loved the first two a lot like i thought they were just great like this the the third one i'll be curious to hear your to me it seemed like it's the one they the, the producers really loved but i'm like man i Wish I'd been in the room when this was discussed and all the different ways that you're going to tell the story and all this, because when you watch the behind the scenes and they're talking about how emotional they are over that, I'm like, I wish I felt that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. First two I loved. Uh, yeah, no, those, the, the, the first two, uh, just great. Just great. Always ahead of you. Always uh, 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 got something else. Another door to open. 
and uh, uh, that I think is is what Rick and Morty can do. Maybe more than any cartoon ever, is stay ahead of the audience like that in 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 a world where anything can happen literally, and and the characters can live and die and and move on and grow, you know, within this kind of uh, a multiverse uh, uh, setting. Nice. Uh, I got a pick. Um, I, I, this is this is let's say eight tenths of a pick. Mm. Let's say eight tenths of a pick. I, this was cute. I thought it was fun. I had a lot of like, there was a lot of funny moments. I laughed quite a lot at this, especially in the first half. Uh, it is the new Disney Plus Pixar film Luca. I finally I finally watched it yesterday. Thought it was very cute and very fun. And you kind of. Uh, Brian, tell me if this tracks. You kind of have to suspend a lot of disbelief at the end of this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, There's a lot about this movie that, if you've even heard of E.T., doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's firmly rooted in a fairy tale of a story. And yeah. um, despite its real-world um, echoes of the way we interact with each other... Um, I'll tell you what, man. Thanks, Pixar. It turns out you can make a movie that doesn't remind me that we're all going to die in the first act. Sure. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, <laughs> I laughed until I cried. The point is, I cried because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> uh, not not because I was despairing over, you know, how awful the world is. Sure. I just, how long is this movie? Is this a, so oh, this it's, is, it's, it's this like is 95 minutes. It's 24. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it is, a, it is a short uh, experience. And I know that Highly in a different in a different world, if this was a two hour movie, you could have really packed in some really interesting conceptual questions about uh, it's basically about these two fish boys who go on to land and they're trying to stay on land and their parents want them back. Um, and uh, there's a lot of really interesting questions that, that they just don't even engage with that would be really fascinating. Well, I would yeah. love to watch. I would love to read the book of Luca because there are. Uh, they just walked by really what I thought were obvious plot conflicts um, that just kind of yeah, get was, smoothed I was, over. I was just having too much fun. And it is one of those where um, it's a general feel-good message about yeah. acceptance and about not needing to hide your true nature and stuff, which you can map onto any number of you know social issues depending on what lens you want to view it through. Uh, but which it, was very weird because I also no thought it worked point. against that in the ending. But uh, uh Oh, that's interesting. Uh, we could uh, we'll talk about this later okay. because this is not interesting Deep to people. Who yeah. Recap, Luca, <laughs> scene by scene. Do it Release in the Japanese price cut. Cowards. It's on Disney I, Plus. It's pretty. It's cute. I've I I'm so behind in Pixar movies because I feel like they kind of make one kind of movie now, and like that the age at which you could get a Finding Nemo, Incredibles, and Cars you know, with very, very different kinds of things. Yeah. Seems mm -hmm. like it's gone. And it's the same character design, even onward, which is, you know, that could have been this really onward. I was fine. Onward is enjoyable. Yeah. But like, even when you could do these really, they just, it's like, is it, is it just that they only see people one way and they only want one kind of story now? Like, I just feel like Pixar is just not very experimental now. You, they do, they do a great product, but it's just, I feel like, like they Brian became said, a like, brand. Mm -hmm. and, and the the they they, they know Are, how to this, bottle I'll, I'll that tell you I'll tell you this much I loved it much cult. more than Soul uh, yeah. Soul got heavy without justifying it to me um, I completely Luca, forgot about Soul exactly That's, I mean uh, Lu Soul but I liked Soul I really Soul. did like Soul a lot was fun and a joy from beginning to end I I it's it's simple yeah. I I loved it. Yeah, it, like, I, it, I, it, I, I, I couldn't help watching Luca and, you know, the soul also came direct to Disney plus uh, onward was like right on the cusp of COVID. So they brought that to, to Disney plus almost immediately. And you kind of get the sense that um, maybe creatively, they're not really pushing the bounds as much. But in terms of like the business that they're doing, which is, hey, when when kids like a movie, when you give kids a good movie, they will stick with it forever. I mean, you look at. The Nightmare Before Christmas and how that's still a thing. It, the TV, Nickelodeon, all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but that's like that, if you that, if you get they're, it in they're, front they're of the kids sauce, now, their secret sauce used to be mm -hmm. let's make a great movie and these kids stick with it forever. And now 
it's that they make a Pixar movie, which is not. They make a very good movie now, well, yeah, but they make bad. a lot of it's them. Just, I think it's like eventually they figured out, all right, what is the DNA between Incredibles and Cars and Finding Nemo and Toy Story and all these things. And now I just kind of feel like they just sort of make that and they just sort of wrap that story in whatever wrapping they want to do. And now there's a dinosaur and now there's a dead blues musician. And now there's uh, fish Italians. Uh, uh, let, well, I, let's, let's go. I think, I think it, it almost works in their favor. If this is a long-term play, right? If you, I look at Luca or even soul or even onward, which are like these fascinating settings that really don't, the only have one story and only really look at one path through that world when they're fat uh, fascinating like onward is beautiful the idea of like let's mix modern technology and also fantasy stuff like there's so many things you can do there and that's just one story and so if this if the content becomes a little more disposable and it becomes a little more franchisable i see where that that works out in the big d's category I, but i a story I remember was Bob Iger talked about when he decided to make the deal with Steve Jobs to acquire Pixar for Disney. And he talked about how they had a parade at Disney and he looked at all of the Pixar characters and they were all the favorites. The Pixar characters, you know, the Buzz Lightyear, Credit, those are the ones that the audience was excited to see. And he's like, we need to buy Pixar because we don't really have that. We, we're not creating new stuff. I challenge you to look at the last 10 years of Pixar and to see who you're going to put into a parade that's going to elicit that much excitement. And I don't think it's there. I don't, Ratatouille, I don't think like, but know, I don't even know when that came out. Was Ratatouille before 10 years? Almost I think certainly, so. I believe. Uh, yeah, but, uh, oh wait. Oh, what's funny is I was about to say Baymax from big hero six, but I realized that's a that's Disney. Disney, not Disney a Pixar. One, yeah. So that would be everything. <laughs> that would basically be toy story three, brave inside out, Coco, toy story four, soul, um, the monsters sequel, I believe, is Coco in that would be, range. Coco would be the only thing new that I would say comes close, and even then, that I love Coco. And that, Coco's I, great. I Coco. Coco makes me cry. I, 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 I love Coco. But I don't know how how the, how much the kids are into Coco, though. Yeah, I guess, and the, these are all they're all good movies, but like they're all it's like they all focused on one kind of thing, which is I think. Uh, and you look at like what they do too is like, you know, part of the reason we get it, you look at some of the box office receipts is they're all over the place. Onward was a big miss for them. And I liked, I enjoyed Onward, but it was still, that got it was a very Pixar. Too. That was a weird. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. and it was a very Pixar, Pixar -y kind of movie though. I'm like, I'm like, man, like I wanted to see some sort of more, if you want to go do fantasy, do some really crazy out there, dragon's lair sort of like, you know, go out there. But Inside Anyhow, Out might be the only thing. thing that I could see would be in like a Disney parade that that kids might be. Maybe yeah, if you get yeah. the the emotions. Yeah, and all, I, know... I think that because it's big, loud. Yeah, uh, Andrew, so, do you have a pick? I have a pick, and first season I liked some of it. Some of that was really good. Some of all like, oh, the second season of Love Death Robots, I've enjoyed every single one. Really, I all of these. Yes. Wow, that's good to hear. The first season yeah, was. I was, I was so tepid on the first one that I I still haven't tried the second season. I there was enough in the first that I liked that it made me try this one, and so like, and then somebody said, "Oh, there's a good one in the second season." I won't tell you which one it is. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, first of all, this is pretty good. It's like, oh, this is really good. This is, I'm, I've enjoyed. I'm not. I don't want to set your expectations really high, but if you're like, oh, I give, I'm going to give you 12 minutes, tell me a fun story, and some of the CGI in this is, and they use some of it. They use a mixture of like, you know, actors. Like, there's Michael B. Jordan's in one, but you're like, you're like that kind of looks like Michael B. Jordan. Oh, it's Michael B. Jordan, but some of it is the mocap is, uh, uh, very. You know, this looks like you know PlayStation E, but you get some other ones where there's one where I'm like, there's there's a couple CGI characters in this thing that are phenomenal. Not this what we're looking at, but there's some other <laughs> ones in there. I go, oh my god, we've reached a new level of I wouldn't if this character was just in another movie, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really dug it, and it's funny because like there's you just saw a clip from one of the stories, and I'm like, man, this feels like a JG Ballard kind of story. I guess it's good, and then it was JG Ballard. Bro, oh, you know, funny. and then you're based. Yeah, there's a lot of a couple of them in there. You're like, oh, this feels kind of like, uh, you know, 
military conflicty kind of in how you know, and it's like, oh, it's Harlan Ellison. So they use some pretty good uh, source material for these stories. Um, I've uh, thoroughly, like I said, I every one of them, even ones that were really out there and different, I still enjoyed for some reason. Nice, cool. So very cool. That that's uh, heartening because I know season two, the idea of a season two was really not a big green check mark for me but hearing hearing that you like season two uh a good deal i i think i'll give it another shot yeah like the longest is like eight, you know we've got two that are 18 minutes um and if they're that long at least they're like the ones that are longer like i mean I'll, i won't tell you what i think the weakest one and there's like a straightforward thing and we kind of you know, like meh but uh, I just enjoy them for the most part. There's one I've been like, yeah, some I won't fight for, but overall, very happy. Nice. Cool. Gentlemen, it's been weird. Here we go. All right. Good show, everybody. We're going to take a few minutes to uh, 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 take a break. We'll come back for some after things. Noise. Yeah. Hey, Justin. How's it going? Yeah, dude. Uh, for sure. For sure. sure uh, fam. Happy observed Fourth of July, everybody. Yeah, we're observing it. Yeah. It's uh, rainier today than it was yesterday. But it hasn't... Oh, wow. It is raining pretty hard. Yeah, uh, it's coming down. I was going to say, it was raining pretty hard yesterday in the morning, too. Uh, but it's coming down right now. My gym's going to be open today. Uh, it's gym day. Uh, today was the second day in the past week where I've gone to the gym, the fitness room at my apartment, Yeah. and it is being cleaned. <laughs> and so I've ended up doing an outdoor run. So I did day two of couch mm. to 5k and did did all right i didn't push myself too hard especially because i smart i did smart. like i also was doing leg day yesterday so i took if it you are easy. if it, the goal is to get through the get through the 30 days like mm. you know, or whatever whatever the schedule is that you're using like as long as you're getting through it that's that's the goal yeah but in that in that just using the couch to 5k was a last minute like i know i need to was gonna run or walk or something so it's basically just intervals, which I've done on the treadmill, but yeah. it's, it's, it's different doing it outside. I don't know if, if you've run into this much yet since you've moved to Texas, probably, but it is way more difficult, I think, to do outdoor running than, you know, indoor on a treadmill. I can't do indoor running. Really? I don't like it. Oh. Mostly because I will always outthink myself from the treadmill. Oh. Always, if I'm running on a treadmill, I will come up with a reason why I need to not be on the treadmill and be doing something else. Mm. If I'm running outside, mm -hmm. then I know that really all I have to do is get halfway. And then at that point, the fastest way I could run home is by running home. So uh. Uh, uh, that, that, that it's a psychological thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but I also, I run in the morning. So the, 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 you know, the hottest that it gets is, you know, low 80s something like that well some of us were making our way through the low 80s today but um yeah. but it's it's i don't know i think between you know the hard the hard uh surface you know the roads and uh the heat has it's just it's i always find it tougher i feel like i probably could have gone um twice as long today if I'm i was sure on the that i probably treadmill. could run more i could run longer on a treadmill uh it's it's mm. more of my own I just I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna convince myself that I gotta go and do a thing and I forgot about a thing that I need to go do and need to leave right now. Uh do you need a break, Jess? Uh I'll... Hello everybody, we're gonna get started. Ooh. Uh... Um We're going to get started with uh, After Things here in just a moment. Thank you to Rob and Dan for the raid. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, thank you so much. 
Dude, it's uh, raining like crazy outside. I know. We were we were just talking about it. I'm glad we I'm glad we missed it. I saw it was it was drizzling on the way in. Yeah. Um, but it's it's coming it's down. Like a, uh, we got like a full hour of this. Oh, that's cool. Well, uh, our listeners have about a full hour of uh, after things. Well, no, no. usually they're not a whole hour. Um, did we, did we get any emails? I don't think we've gotten any emails in a minute. I got, I got one thing that says question. Oh, it's a comment. Okay, I'll just forward this over to Andrew so he can see it. But, uh, uh, I, I hope Andrew knows he's muted and that we cannot hear him. He might be, he might be talking to another occupant of his house or, uh, you know, his voice device. In any case, uh, how you doing, Brian? Good. Did you do anything? Did you do anything for Fourth yesterday? Yeah, we did. Went swimming. Ooh. Hung out with the pod, uh, Padres, the parents. Um, surprisingly, normally I'm I'm big on fireworks, but uh, I, I, I just had no interest in lighting things on fire. Hmm. Wow, yeah. that's surprising. Right? A little surprising. Yeah. What'd Opal you say? Is a f- did one? Opal is a fickle mistress. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Yep, that's also true. Um, okay, well, um, you guys want to do some after things? Yeah. Um, we'll give we'll give Andrew a sec. We'll give him a second here. Don't worry, don't worry. Um. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, it was good. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before the um. um most everybody stopped their fireworks around midnight. Not everybody. I heard I heard them going off pretty late into the night uh, out da- down there in old South Austin. Yeah, I was uh, I was mainly this was uh, Joyful's first uh, 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 I guess since she was a, a wee pup, uh, mm-hmm. the first since we've had her uh, fireworks evening. And, oh, how'd uh, she do? She she was not bothered. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. good I enough. heard all the popping and locking, and then I peeked over the edge of the rail, and she's just like, just like uh, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> she's like, "What's up, bro?" I'm like, "All right, we're we're good." <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys uh, do some after after things. Oh no, we're gonna give him another minute. Give him another sec. <laughs> Gotta take a sip. It's simple, simply, you simply have to sip. <laughs> I like this. Ah, I got an email for you, Andrew, from a month ago. Okay. Well, I, yeah. look, I Sorry. put it. I put it on the side because it's not a question. It was a comment. Uh. <laughs> you, what you see as a comment, I see as a topic for our show. Oh, okay. There you go. See, that's the that's the vision. That's the mm-hmm. vision in, at play. All right. Well, uh, I am going to count you in, Andrew, to start after things. How about that? Yay! All right. I'll start you in three. Two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. So we got a great comment. This is from Terry Robinson. A while back, I mentioned getting a CO2 monitor just out of curiosity. And Terry writes, shout out to Andrew for noting the benefits of a CO2 monitor. I got one recently and found out that I, what I thought was an afternoon drowsiness and brain fog was just the CO2 concentration in my home office rising. Over a few weeks, I found my cognitive skills flagging starting at 1100 ppm parts per million. It feels magical to be able to do heavy math again by just opening a window and waiting 20 minutes and waiting for the CO2 to drop. Holy crap. For real? That's a thing that can happen. I sure. always feel drowsiness. Am I am I just CO two poisoned? Well, and uh, also like like these are symptoms that I've always been familiar with with regular com- carbon monoxide poisoning. You know, is 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 getting fogged and 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 out of sorts. Uh, but but CO two, considering it's what our lungs manufacture and then and have in our lungs, I, I did not realize was that much of a troublemaker. Uh, yeah, turns out that, um, we don't want a lot of CO2 fun fact, crazy fact. 
And that if you're in a closed environment and you start getting too much CO2 level in there that, yeah, like, and, and it's, you know, what are the safe levels? They talk about what's safe, but if you start looking, if you just go look online, for like what they consider safe in building occupied spaces, and there's levels where uh, it gets really dangerous, but there's also levels where you just start, you do feel a little bit tired or drowsy. And you think about like, you know, I remember like, you know, some classrooms in school that I had that probably had poor ventilation and kind of the middle of the afternoon, it's partially middle afternoon, but also like if you're in an office long enough, the CO2 things can build up there. But like, yeah, so it's not going to, the so commenter points out, it's not poisonous. It's not like carbon monoxide, no. which is going to get in your bloodstream. But if you're getting more CO2 and less oxygen, then it's taking the place of oxygen. And also, you know, your lungs, you know, are hoping to get more air than CO2 or oxygen than air. I'm getting so, one. I'm getting it right now. I, now I'm yeah. sold. You sold me. Now, uh, explain this to me. Um, if if CO2 is not itself poisonous, but is only poisonous or harmful to the extent that it crowds out oxygen, if you have more oxygen as well, do you, do you care how much CO2 there is? Well, I mean, it again, if you, you, you have a volume of air, let's say a liter of air. Right. Okay. Right. And there's how much CO2 your body's producing, or your body's producing CO2 all the time. That's why it's not really poisonous, because otherwise, ah, oh, I'm dying trying to get rid of it from your body. Okay. Right. Right. The, the, the problem is, is if it displaces, if all of a sudden your oxygen content is decreased because of CO2, right. Or because every breath you take, your body's working a little bit more to get rid of that CO2, then you're not taking as much air, oxygen. Right. Uh, uh, which brings me to my question if you have, if you add more oxygen, to the air, if you just open up an oxygen thing and see so you're getting the same amount of oxygen as before, the only thing you're getting less of would be presumably nitrogen because the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. So, oh, yeah. so you, so have, you, have, you have, have a liter of air. What you have a liter of air. Yes. What are you doing? Uh, well, uh, uh, let's say right now it's pumping uh, oxygen it's, into it's that about, liter, uh, right? Yeah, correct. It's so. It's, is it is it is it becoming a one point two liters, one point three liters? No, 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 what are you no, no. getting rid of? Uh, to you're, make... you're ditching you're ditching the nitrogen because it's filling. Oh, so you have a liter of air. It's filling up with mm -hmm. CO two. So let's say it's doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Uh, if you also double, triple, quadruple the amount of oxygen, is that poisonous? No, you 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 can breathe pure oxygen. To make it clear, like we have. If you, and that, I get, man, I get people in my books like, oh, you had somebody breathing pure oxygen. That's deadly. I'm like, no, it's not. Depends upon the, depends upon the air pressure, everything else like this. We have astronauts. We'll put them into space capsules. The air pressure is much lower. And so we had like the first Apollo astronauts. It was pure oxygen inside of there. Granted, it was a lower concentration, but you have people who come up from the deep sea who have like the bends. You put in a chamber and you pipe them in pure oxygen. Okay. But right. At a lower pressure. Yeah, yeah, but 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 that's but that's because uh, their blood is saturated with nitrogen, uh, uh, yeah. which is why we right. replace the nitrogen with helium, uh, which is why Jacques Cousteau sounds like he's just come out of a balloon. Uh, but and but it's French, but yeah. But 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 like um, this is the question that um, that I still feel like after so many years, I I, I can't wrap my mind around like CO two in and of itself is or is not toxic it's you're well okay poisonous and toxic are different so it depends like your body works to remove co2 your body has to your, your body all the time is trying to remove co2 if you're taking more co2 into your body than normal your body's going to be work it's like oh well these are co2 molecules why are you i'm trying to get rid of these why do you keep putting these in here now right. i gotta and, work and, and, to and, get and that's why when you hold your breath and then finally you feel the need to gasp for air that's mm -hmm. that's not you sensing a lack of oxygen that's you sensing a buildup of co2 that is unpleasant in in your chest um that sounds like science to me uh, uh as, as as i understand it but but um yeah. uh, uh but like a buildup of co2 i guess i guess in this case a buildup of co2 uh is baked in with the assumption that you're not also supplementing the oxygen in the air. Therefore, you're likely crowding out the amount of oxygen that you're getting on one of these sensors. 
Sure. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I, I know like from my scuba classes and all that thing, I, you know, thing I kind of understood was just that like your body is always trying because our, our body, part of the way our body works is we turn oxygen into CO2. That's what we're doing. We're turning oxygen to CO2. And so we have all this machinery to try to get rid of CO2 because CO2 doesn't, isn't helpful. It's a thing we got to, you know, it's a thing we have to exhale. So if you're taking in more CO2 in there, then your body's working more to get rid of the CO2 and you're getting, you know, less oxygen. You know, because of all the little molecules that are trying to do this that maybe ignore the nitrogen or whatever. I don't know. But all I know is too much CO2, foggy, way too much CO2, you're dead. Dead, Brian. See, dead. Yeah, and all of that sounds like it's toxic or bad. Or, well, or, or, toxic, or, I know. No, I think we said poison. Is that toxic, we said yeah. poison. Poisonous you're using is different than toxic. So, so toxic, if we're defining toxic by it would have an adverse relationship to your life, then that's different than poisonous in that it will kill you at a certain level. Like water's not poison, but you can drown in water. Correct. And it's the but same thing not, with CO2. But not if you also have oxygen filling your lungs. <laughs> like, like you well, yeah, if you're, not, if you're not drowning, then you won't drown. But, 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 well, again, and, and, and I, I, I guess somebody, somebody write us a <laughs> clarification because I, I yes, still, yeah. it's, it still seems clear as mud to me. Professor CO2. Well, again, the idea there's, is there's, open a window, bring some fresh it, air it, in. CO2, again, poison toxic. CO2 is one of the things, too much CO2 in your blood is toxic. Your blood behaves differently, starts behaving differently. It's a different thing to have like a physical thing by expelling stuff. Google CO2 toxicity. There we go. Put and it's, that it's, on a billboard. It's there. It's it's Google. Google it's CO2 there. toxicity. Uh, CO2 is considered to be minimally toxic by inhalation. The primary health effects caused by CO2 are, are uh, of its, a result of its behavior as a simple asphyxiant. Right, which means you're you're not getting oxygen. But if you are getting oxygen, then then you're not. Then I probably wouldn't have the symptoms. Hey, I don't care, man. I already bought this hundred dollar gizmo. So <laughs> okay, whatever, dude. I'm gonna put it in my. I'm gonna put it in my room, and when I feel, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some stats. That is something I've felt my entire life is uh, hazy at certain points during the afternoon. Every every day of my life. Really? Yeah. Maybe you got to open a window. Pin. Maybe I do. I don't ever open windows. I'd like to open more. I'll say like, you know, um, I mean, this is completely anecdotal, but I, I know that the other three scientists on the podcast, I think will be okay with it. But uh, when, I, when I took that month off, I was sitting outside a lot and I felt great. Yeah, I still feel great. I go sit outside a lot more free, free, free oxygen, free nitrogen. Yeah. Otherwise, you got to pay for it. That's right. They got a big tank. <laughs> Had to get one of those 90s bubblers. Hey, thanks, Frank, <laughs> the tank deliverer. It's all right. <laughs> Clang. And I think I think the the kid the it gets muddled because it's sort of the thing we're used to sometimes like sometimes a poison is a poison is a poison. And CO2 is a thing that our body naturally really gets rid of it at a certain level. It's like, eh, now we're fine. But when you get above that level, it's like, oh, now it's poison. Cause like I can't handle it. The little machinery gets rid of it. And so so now I'm being poisoned. Why are you poisoning me at the CO2? Like we liked it earlier. Yeah, yeah. 400 parts per million, bro. Bro. You know? Bro. So. Yeah. And I don't know if I really feel confident to know the difference between poison and toxic and bad. I know. No, I don't. I accept that only one of them's by Bell Biv DeVoe and the other is by Brittany. <laughs> Hashtag free Britney. Free Britney. Uh, hey, so uh, I I just got this email into the After Things podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. Hello, uh, we're two people who have a podcast, and we are trying to figure out how to monetize it. Should we riddle it with ads that, uh, or should we be you listener supported? Saying, you keep saying this thing like we're not going to do both. <laughs> Uh, uh, like you stop saying it like an either or. <laughs> well, 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 I'm sorry. Did, did you get a different email? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, hey, Justin, Brian got the email. Got Brian the email. Oh, I'm sorry. I here. didn't. I didn't know. It's a I chain didn't of know. Custody. He got the email delivered to the bottom of his uh, of his uh, Earl Grey tea that he's <laughs> shiftily fingering. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Does it uh, matter how we get email? Or do we have a lot of email, Justin? We've got Are, a lot a of, email. of email. We've got a lot of email. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, basically, uh, uh, we're, we're at this moment with world's greatest con where, um, uh, 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 I don't, I don't want to talk out of school, but, um, 
uh, but the offers for mm, advertising monetization have been underwhelming. Yeah, I mean, so here's here's what we understood about uh, podcast advertising. Number one, uh, it's a very commoditized world. Uh, uh, I think it is far more down the evolutionary chain than, let's say, YouTube advertising is, because YouTube advertising, much like TikTok or Snapchat or or even you know uh, uh, web advertising to a certain extent, is uh, newer. People are still taking chances. People are still trying out certain different things. Podcast advertising is essentially a derivative of radio advertising, which has been around forever, longer than television advertising has been around. So uh, I think the, the, the people that sell it are limited. The people that broker it are limited. And the uh, uh, ready-made place where advertising comes in for Brian's operation is for YouTube stuff that is not necessarily fit into this world. And so they were really only able to get pretty basic offers, which uh, is, is fine. You know, the goal of season one was really to establish the, uh, the RSS feed and so far so good. We have done that uh, uh, very well. The, uh, uh, the, the, the step that we're going to now is when we were thinking about, okay, well, what are our options for advertising for season two, which will be a lot easier because now we'll have numbers that we can go to and we're in the process of talking to some people that uh, we could get a, a general idea of what kind of advertising we'd be looking at for uh, a, a, you know, new episodes of it, uh, is that, you know, what is the Patreon world for a, uh, for, for a, a, a podcast that doesn't come out weekly? That, that has no guarantees of coming out for, for months and months and months at a time. And I think uh, uh, we're going to find out because we literally just launched a Patreon. Patreon.com slash greatest con uh, is where you can go. And uh, uh, what we are promising you is that we will keep you in the loop uh, month by month as we go along and make these episodes. And when they come out, uh, you will get ad-free uh, versions of it. Uh, and then on the on the free side, we are going to leverage the numbers that we have built in season one to sell advertising on it. But, uh, you know, this is a, a new experience, which is odd in the world of podcasting where we've kind of made our living over the past uh, uh, several years. Uh, this is a new experience. And so far it has been uh, interesting. We literally launched the first episode right before we came on here. And so uh, people are it's just propagating into people's feeds and. They are, uh, you know, probably going to be listening to it during their work days tomorrow, uh, as opposed to their beach days today. But, uh, you know, we will, uh, we will, we will see how it goes. So, uh, my question is, uh, hi, I'm an advertiser. Hi. Where, where would I find the website for this podcast? So I could click on the, I want to advertise on your podcast. Uh, greatest con podcast is, uh, the, the URL. We do not have a, a, a advertise with us button, uh, but that is a good note. We should put an advertise with us button. Is there anything on the about page, like a contact info? No. Uh, no, but we can. Yeah, that would uh, be, I think that would be a simple, uh, and I would say, uh, cause you guys are using fireside. If they've got a built in contact form, do not use it. Uh, I have, I have had to take my contact form off of my personal website because, um, uh, let's say a very Spam big, ops. a very big name in building websites, their contact form is a very, very well-known target and you get a lot of spam that looks real because it has to go through them. Oh, really? Yes. I, I, I'm, so I, now, I, I, I presume we are talking about the same, uh, uh simple web building platform, but, right. uh, Mine has been pretty good. Uh, I know on Cord Killers we get we get a couple every week. My personal website I had to take it down and replace it with like a riddle, like "Hey, here's my thing and my thing," and you put them together and you'll get my email. Because otherwise, it just you just get you know, uh, uh Josh Ryan sent you a message, and the message says a uh, Burgundy. <laughs> End of message. Ah, uh, di Diane. Uh, uh, Albrecht has, has sent you a message and Diane says Snickers bar. And it's, it's literally just that just to game. Like, I don't know if they're trying to game the Gmail system so that the emails that they put in there work, but just 
So that's to all people. Be very careful about contact contact forums uh, because you're going to get a lot of spam. You can get a lot of spam. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, I don't know if Fireside has, has a, a contact form per se, but... Uh, also, if, if, they're, if they're serious and have heard the show, I believe every single episode we give out the URL. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the email, the, the email, yeah. the email. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how was it doing that, that final episode? You, you, uh, uh talk you want, about a mailbag? And you, you want, you, you want, you want, you want to talk some numbers? You, I mean, did you like doing it? Cause it no, seemed I think like we were just talking about, yeah, just oh, doing the final great. episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Doing no, the Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, it was great. Uh, it's interesting cause it's a different voice. You know, we don't want to be silly like we are in night attack or, you know, chasing the squirrels like we sometimes do here uh, on on weird things after things. Um, so, uh, but I felt I felt I felt like it was sincere and honest and direct, and the questions were really good, uh, which I really liked. They they were all fair questions. Where it's like uh, you said blank, then later you said blank. Am I misunderstanding something? And then we're able to you know spend five minutes clarifying. Where it's like, well, both are true, and yeah. you know this part at this time they wanted to do whatever and. And we we edited this out for this reason, that kind of thing, uh, which is, um, on the one hand, feels a little bit self indulgent, but it's a high quality enough uh, podcast that I think it merits that that level of thoughtful, you know, explanation on. Yeah, uh, uh, I think the biggest thing was again just trying to make it not uh, 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 too silly. As as Brian and I are 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 want to do, and we're just trying to crack each other up. So uh, uh, that is not the tone of World's Greatest Con. <laughs> the World's Greatest Con obviously has a little bit more of a, a reverential air to it. So mostly it was just me trying to not ruin it by saying something that I would then have to edit out. I think you're in a great position. Should you do another another run, another season, another whatever? Um, you think about. To you guys, you feel like you've been on this very long journey, but this thing is really new. Right. Yes. It's really new. And, and, and yeah. I, I think and that so, that's 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 the biggest thing that I want to keep in mind with um with uh, uh uh the Patreon specifically is that you know Brian and I feel like we have we are ritually deserved uh uh whatever reaction is going to happen after eight months of uh uh you know, macheteing through the, the you know the, the 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 thick underbrush and finally emerging as conquering heroes, uh, but then you look at our our dashboard and you're like, oh, uh, fifteen days, fifteen days is all that's existed between uh, uh, when we released our first two episodes and our final episodes. Yeah, like uh, so we have been in people's lives for not a month. Uh, 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 as of, as of yet. And I think the reaction, the numbers are great. The reaction so far has been stellar. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm always a fan of putting your net in the water with a Patreon, uh, sooner rather than later, because I, I think that you are going to find your audience. You want to reward your audience who want to give you money whenever they want to give you money. Right. At the, at the peak of their excitement is when uh, you want to hit them. I think we we kind of all disagree a little bit. I I I think that there is there is a moment where you, I guess it it depends how you define peak. Yeah, I, I was I was about to say I cannot imagine our ex any excitement being greater two weeks from now than today. No, no, no. The only <laughs> the only question would then be like when we're coming back. If people are excited because oh. now now we've been away and and now we come back. And like so what is the peak that you want to, you know, but would it you know, quite assuredly more people will probably listen by the end of season two or the end of season three or or, you know, if we continue to build and do press and blah 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 and it continues to find uh, an audience, then more people will be listening and those peaks will be higher than the peak that we have right now. Uh, but I'd rather throw that, uh, throw that, throw that net in, in, in the ocean and, and, uh, also just have an audience of people that really like the show and want to get it ad free. Like, I think that that's, those are people that, that should be rewarded here. Here's, uh, another little note. 
Um, and I'm always happy to help aspiring podcasters and people who come on our show with some advice. Um, there's no F and email sign up that I can find on your page. Uh, we were just talking about that. And about how the email is given out at the no, end. No, of no, 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 no. At an actual email. No, email. Oh, email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. First email list. Um, yeah. Try to school marm me. Um, <laughs> that's uh, the. Uh, yeah. We actually have a pretty good so email one list, too. which is good. Yeah, we have. Uh, did build one. Yeah. Uh, but we should have it. We should have it on. on I mean, the, uh, I, yeah. oh man, I love these guys. And oh, I, I want to know. And, and not just not just in my podcast feed, but like. Why do I have to tell you guys? Like, I think a hundred people on that list that are really into it, and you want to launch a way to get paid. That's prime. Those are your people you want. Oh, they will be. They will be getting an email. <laughs> <laughs> they will. There is. Uh, uh, we, we. We. So number one, uh, uh, you are totally right. On our about page, we should have a place where people can get on our mailing list. How many who will find us through there? You know, will we, we, we'll, will remain to be seen. The way that we built the mailing list for this season was uh via brian's most passionate audience uh, uh both from his mailing list and from his youtube channel and so we we gave early access to the first uh episode to people that were on you know they had to I'm jump on those lists to do it uh but but yeah i'm on those lists i'm saying like i i let's say you had more than 50 people download this and they came from outside of that bubble yeah I'm like, get, like you should have a thing on here. Click here to find I, out I, more. I, I totally agree. Okay, totally agree. Okay, yeah. No, no, no. Oversight. Yeah, I'm saying it started off with somebody bemoaning, like, do we advertise or do this or do that? And I'm like, man, this guy should talk to Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young about how to. <laughs> no, no. I think I think the the uh, the question is just uh, you know how we how we balance that going forward. Um, and- it's a transition. I mean, you're in a, it is a transitionary period. Now is the time where you kind of would open up some of this time to shift gears into out of season and doing these little quality of life. Well, things. I, I think uh, yeah, here's, here's the reality of it. Um, there were a lot of times through the beginning of world's greatest con that Brian and I were talking about what we wanted it to be. And we were excited about working on it. We were excited about shaping it. And then we got toward the end and we realized, oh, wow, not only do we have something that we're really proud of and happy with, but also people we you know, have listened to it are excited and happy to listen to it. And they say it's really good. And then when we were launching it, there were a lot of, hey, we don't care about the money. We care about launching it. And now I think... Uh, uh, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, if we don't want the next revolution around the sun to take eight months, having money would help, right? Uh, oh yeah, I mean that was that was the the message that we gave on on today's episode. Um, uh, yeah, I mean I'm big. I, uh, I, I I don't disagree with anything that we've heard. We uh, should be definitely. I I I I feel a little bit unqualified because I don't speak fireside. Um, so I I don't know how to do any of the things that are being proposed. Oh, I would just be putting links in the thing, you know. But no, I mean I think it's it's certainly fair uh, uh, to to say that if somebody, you know, was was listening to the show and liked it and just went through their head what the email was that they would Google the website and then look to find a place. And we, uh, that'll be up there on the about section shortly after we wrap. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I was confused trying to figure out what was the official web page. Cause the fireside FM page felt like a pod bean thing or whatever. And their web development tools are not the best, but I'll tell you what, this I mean- is the- that is that's a very common issue with podcasting where you know in general you want people to listen to the show or you want to send people to the thing you want them to do like it's it's good for like it's good that podcasts you know have a can have a landing page or a homepage but i think about the podcasts that i listen to and almost never end up needing to go to their website maybe i'll go to the patreon to uh because maybe they have bonus content or I'm looking to con- to contribute but it's but it is a very strange thing. I remember we we kind of I don't think we ran up into any conflicts be- 
specifically because of this, but I remember when we were doing the big, um, the however many years ago, the podcast awards thing, and yeah. they had they had some like kind of uh, interesting, very specific rules, like hey, you should have a website, and your website should let you listen to your podcast, because a lot of podcasts don't have that. A lot of podcasts like have a have a site with information, but maybe not a player or maybe not um, links to things. But um, we we uh, it's it's kind of a it is kind of a little bit of an unknown, I would say, of of what you put on a podcast home page yeah. website because I, most people won't use it. I, I I will say in general, and this is a personal thing that I'm I'm fully willing to admit that I am wrong on, but I don't focus a lot on the web page uh, because I don't, I personally don't have any kind of interaction with any of the podcasts that I love and cherish and have changed my life. I don't have a relationship with their website. Um, now ways to get in touch with people. That is, that is uh, 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 important. And, and I tend to naturally try to find those things on social media before I try to look on a website. That's not to say that that is, uh, the right way to go about things, but rather that is that is my own uh, perspective. As far as the world's greatest con website, uh, yeah, Fireside uh, uh, puts out a a site that is easy to put up. They the 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 things you know the 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 episodes play. Yeah. Um. So that's in general where I'm uh, uh where where I'm at. That being said, we could put a, at least a custom URL on it so it doesn't resolve to a Fireside. Uh, a thing to make it a little bit more yeah, official, I mean, at, official. At, at, at the very least, because that is that is valuable insight to say that it looks, you know, like some kind of auto generated stuff. But that being said, I'm I'm thrilled with with Fireside as a host. And uh, oh, good. Uh, yeah, they have. Uh, I, I like their tools. I think it's it's a good it's a good host. Yeah, I'm. Oh, Brian, I'm sorry. Oh, I was, I was going to say uh, uh, also to mask, uh, um, depending on your, your domain registrar, it could be like right now it's just a straightforward that's unmasked, yeah. but it could be a, a simple checkbox to still have, have the be, displayed URL yeah. be that. Yeah. Yeah. Point of entries are hard to figure out. Like, cause like I, like uh, there's a lot of stuff like, yeah, I don't, you know, I just, it's just thing I consume or whatever YouTube you know, it's kind of st YouTube. You the place you consume it is easy to get the information for because you're not watching YouTube videos in some other application in theory. Um, and then you just click the about or the channel page and people can kind of put that there. Podcasts get harder because it's like, where is the canonical source of information for that? You know, where where is the canonical place I go to do that? Because you have all the different podcaster catchers you try to do that. I don't consume any podcasts. And so... You know, Patreon certainly is helpful because Patreon, if they have a Patreon, I'm like, well, that's where they're cashing their checks. So I know that's where they're going to pay attention if I want to talk to somebody who I support or whatever. Um, so and I even then, kind of and even then, you know, I, I know there are people who I've subscribed to in the past on Patreon and they don't really use the Patreon system, which is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about it's about contributing for a, for a lot of it. Um, and maybe that's just not the type, you know, it's a, it's maybe thing where they don't do bonus content, but, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, the Patreon is a, is, is a good new face for world's greatest con because a lot of you're constantly going to be trying to send people over there. And, um, and that's a lot of opportunities to say, this is this type of content and we've got all these little contact bits or what have you. Um, Yeah. I would say sooner than later. I would. I don't think you guys could harvest too soon now with a Patreon. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was that was part of the idea. The more we talked about it, um, I think we were going over what we were expecting ad rate wise uh, for a season two, and whether or not we were going to add stuff for season for like even the final episodes of of this season. And uh, I think the question I had was, all right, let me just throw out the what if, like are we stupid for not just starting a Patreon immediately? And the question that we, or the, the answer that we kind of came to over the next half hour was yes, we would be stupid if we did not start one immediately. Well, and, and I, I think that's because also uh, algorithmic uh, advertising rewards 
uh, a mile wide and an inch deep. Um, uh, if you have giant numbers, millions and millions um, across a back catalog of a thousand episodes, and you could press one button and suddenly all of them are shouting about Jiffy Lube, uh, all regional, regionally appropriate based on city or whatever, then yeah, that probably matters. Um, uh, then there's that mushy middle, which is uh, do your people, uh, your listeners care very deeply about you um, that works to the extent that they will say, I hear you. I've listened to your 90 second spot about whatever, uh, website making apparatus. And for the first time I've seen the light and I will now sign up. Uh, but those, those offers only keep on coming to the extent that, y that people keep on signing up. Uh, uh the reactions that we had, had gotten on this were, um, they, they didn't seem to fit into either category where it's like, we just got a bunch of, this meant a lot to me personally. And um, the numbers are very, very good, but they're not a mile wide. Uh, and uh, so it, it seemed like a natural fit to, um, uh, to, to go direct to listener supported, which is a bit of a, a tough road to hoe because um, uh, you got to, uh, 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 of all the people, those are the last ones you want to disappoint. Are are the people who are are opening up their own their own wallets for it? Uh, Can you unpack that for me, Brian? Uh, well, I don't have to care emotionally about whether or not Jiffy Lube is getting a good return on investment. They, uh, I promised them a million eyeballs and, or a million ear holes, and they're getting a million ear ear holes. I've done my job. We're and and next month it'll be, it'll be you know a, a, a Firestone instead of Jiffy Lube. Uh, it is purely mathematical and transactional. Uh, the the ones where where it's a host ad read and use my promo code and they're gonna take care of you. Number one, I better believe in the product. Number two, they're only gonna keep showing up if. I sell if I sell stuff. So then uh, if you don't sell enough of the, the things, if not enough people use the promo code, you get called into the principal's office. And then they say, ooh, not too many websites being sold this month. Uh, and then all of a sudden it confuses your, uh, your job. There's nothing, uh, it's almost more purely artistic to do the, the, the numbers-based algorithmic thing because you know, you're just slapping a label on it. And then, but but the ones that I worry about the most, and the reason that that we we paused to consider whether or not we were ready to do Patreon, is because now it's like that is the most honest and direct of relationships that you're going to have. It's you and the listener, and the listener is going to let you know when you cease to please them, and uh, you will feel the onus to perform in a way that that you don't have to when they're just algorithmic ads. Yeah, I I love Skype. I'm clicking on my camera here and it's like, oh, you chose a camera, but no, I'm not gonna show it. No. <laughs> Choose a background effect. I don't want a background effect. Cool. Uh, so anyhow, uh, I'm just gonna be Mr. Skype right now. Um, Ted. I, I, I looked the other day at like all the stuff I support on Patreon and I'm like, who do I need to kill? Cruel, you know, who do cool. I need to call from? <laughs> call it. Yeah. I like, well, I like the no, fact that the, the thriller novelist accidentally almost said kill. <laughs> instead I, was of in a dark, I was in a dark mood when I did it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, and I'm like, you know what? Like, Osbris hasn't done much lately, but I like them. You know, I'm like, I like this person. And so I'm like, oh, well, why don't I keep them all? And if you're telling me that, like, the difference, if I knew, like, I would rather pay to support the next season of this than watch you stand across the street waving at cars with Jiffy Lube written across your breast. Well, and, um, and I would I, rather. Oh, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I'd I, rather. I'd, I'd rather. If if I knew the money was there and you guys were getting compensated from that, like, um, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know the breakdowns right now and like really successful ones, what's doing better, whatever. But like, if I could just pay for this and know that you guys get to go do your thing and your fans are supporting you, then cool. Yeah. I, I, I think the only thing I, I want to just keep in, in, in stark relief is that the free feed will have ads on it. <laughs> we are going to take the check okay. from, from the people that want to pay us now that we have numbers the reason why the first season didn't have ads was because we didn't have any kind of numbers and it was hard to estimate exactly what it would launch at um the people that wanted to gamble on and you know there being no numbers uh uh was not something that we felt was really worth the squeeze and so the second season on the free feed will have ads uh but we do want to give people a chance to pay for it to have it without and and uh you know, the, the, the journey of how many those, uh, how many of those people there are, I think is going to be interesting because, uh, we'll, we'll see. Well, and, and, and maybe this is, this is the distinction is I see no reality where, uh, algorithmic ads get us to triple our output. There's it flat out will not happen. Oh, algorithmic ads. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, and from what I've heard so far, integrated host red ads will also not get us to triple our output. No. So when I say it's an either or, it's like either there's a world where we are listener supported and we've tripled our output or we're in some other world. And yeah, I that, 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 that is makes, the that simple makes binary that, makes sense. Yeah. That, that I think uh, when I say, I mean, if, if we want, if we want pocket change, then sure, we'll do well, one I, every eight months, and it'll be some delightful Jiffy Lube pocket change. Mm -hmm. uh, that and that's that's I I I'm I'm less enthused about. That. I think yeah, the the idea, what is good about Patreon is that it pays us in the off season, um, and and that is important because the off season is when we make the thing for the season. <laughs> so uh, uh, the people that we need to pay to make it go faster are working in the off season so we can unspool it for everybody uh, uh, when it, when it goes live. So, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like uh, you are, you're dead right in that that is a necessary part of things uh, going forward. And you know, this is a, a, a it, it's, it's an interesting thing because I think in, in previous years, We've done Patreons kind of later in the game uh, when we've already built up a lot of of, of goodwill. Uh, and despite the fact that this is a very well listened to show, you know, better than a lot of stuff that we've done, uh, you know, we're we're going to see. We're going to see exactly where that is. Well, I'm excited. Um, I couldn't be more prouder to see what you guys have done to be, you know, associated with you and say, these are my friends and look what they've done. So, I mean, that's exciting. And, you know, I don't think I could ask for two smarter people to try to figure out how to monetize this. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 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 not like you guys can miss an opportunity there. I just, uh, I just now realized that you're wearing a Halix shirt. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, fandom can make you do crazy, stupid things like <laughs> by, by, merchandise for a disney property that lasted all of like 12 weeks <laughs> and, 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 and also if i remember the documentary correctly it was not necessarily even a disney property it was just a a it was an independent property that was hired uh to in the same way that 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 my bizarre magic show was a Halloween Horror Nights uh, property, like no, this was Disney. This was wholly Disney. This really? was Halix was a wholly owned Disney, produced by Disney Music Pub Disney Disney Music Publishing. They were trying to well, tie right. in that, all the elements to it. Uh, that's right, because uh, uh, she did do like a, a, make a Minnie Mouse Jazzer size or something. Down, yeah, they were Disney down the road. Contract. Yeah. yeah, they they got the 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 only sort of autonomy was because they were performers is they could have like the long hair or the beard or whatever you know halix was a disney head to toe a disney created oh. band so crazy yeah yeah you know with great songs like jailbait um <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh it really was a well, look at that a, look a, at that a delightful poster. documentary awesome. from uh defunct land that yeah. uh, if we're doing picks uh, uh defunct land channel continues to deliver yeah uh, Kevin, yeah, I'll be my pick too. Kevin Perger, who does that, he just did an entire episode. You see the latest episode? No. It's, it's, the, I couldn't make it through a whole thing, but God bless him for doing it. 
on the Disney Handwich. What? Disney came out with this sandwich in a cone. It's bread, <laughs> this breaded cone, and they could scoop all kinds of meat and stuff inside of there. They were very excited about the handwich because they put it in their parks. They thought this thing was going to outsell everything else. And somebody there is like, you know, shoving, you know, tuna salad into there or something. Oh my God. So it, it's it, an it, ice cream cone, but it's a soft bread and yep. they just jam like sub filling like like a burrito that that doesn't yeah. uh, that doesn't leak out the bottom i suppose the idea is get the hell out of here get go get in line for a ride <laughs> and go yeah like fast prep oh sandwich like oh that bread that this 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 scoop you're done boom take it walking and then, and then perger makes he goes and he makes a handwich in it he should makes the different handwiches he recreates the menu from that that's amazing <laughs> they're disgusting they look gross they just <laughs> i'm still yeah. gonna watch this <laughs> yeah i think he's using my fawns but yeah anyhow uh <laughs> anyhow so yeah double pick uh defunct land kevin perger great content and every time they put something out it's a delight uh, I'm going Even to make fun. my pick the After Things podcast pick section where Andrew and Brian pick the funk plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I, I got a I got a pick. Um, uh, 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 some of some people that you might know um, may have recently launched um, oh. a podcast oh, and the other oh, and it is online now. Um, if anybody's interested, it might be called Great Night. Um, uh, watchgreatnight.com will take you to the YouTube channel, twitch.greatnight.tv. We'll send you to the Twitch. Yeah, channel. That, that's, Boy, that's what a, a, whole, what a like, hell of a hell of a hell of a whirlwind 48 hours. I feel last like, week yeah, was. I feel like, you know, because the last kind of like conversation that Brian and I have before we come on here is, is launching the, the, you know, the, the, the world's greatest con episodes the last few weeks that Great Night has gotten short shrift, which is, uh, certainly not representative of the kind of time and effort that has gone into it largely uh, uh bryce you did an amazing job if we can if we can see just some of how our uh a brand new set looks uh i i just think it is it is very well um it is it is a, a well representative of a whole new era of the show of uh, uh, giving ourselves some room to to breathe, where Brian and I are are in the same uh, place. We had our, our our minimum viable product show, which was uh, a debut, which was far more than that. You know, I think uh, the fact that uh, we, it was a win because everything worked, it was a success because it was really fun, and I had an absolute blast. Uh, I think the audience did too. The numbers on it were fantastic. So uh, a big shout out to Bryce uh, for 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 uh, working as hard as he did here, here. on that. And yeah. uh, that's another Patreon that you can go to. Uh, yeah. uh, Patreon.com Patreon. slash, great night. slash great night. And, that's, and that's and that's another thing where like Great Night is in transition away from the Night Attack brand, which means like we uh, we still don't have a website yet. We are still working on the website stuff because, you know, we're... We're keeping the, we still got the same feed. We still got the same YouTube channel. Uh, we brought everybody over to the new Twitter. So most everybody is still in place, but we need time behind the scenes to work on, you know, the website and, and uh, other, other things. So it's, it's, it is, I think, in a similar place to great, uh, to world's greatest con where there are some things that we still have not achieved yet. And we, we need time because we push them off for functionality. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time because a lot of things are, are launching and changing and, and, uh, everything feels kind of very, uh, hands-on in a way that in the world of infinite podcasting, which is something that we have lived in for a very long time, sometimes you, you just kind of go with the flow and, and you just show up and do the show and, and make it fun and, and then, live to podcast another week and right now everything is very uh uh you know tactile everything can be changed everything can be uh, uh affected uh you know it helps having an amazing audience that is uh, uh passionate about it um 
However, when you are launching two different, relaunching one property and launching another property, that also means that uh, you get a lot of uh, a lot of unsolicited advice, <laughs> which is uh, uh, you know helpful on on some level and and uh, you know sometimes uh, a little bit uh, full on in in other cases, but it's uh it's it's awesome and i love 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 tuesday and and uh, and i think we got a lot of really fun things coming up for tomorrow and and weeks going forward yeah uh so uh uh watchgreatnight.com we'll take you to the youtube there it's it's good in 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 video so uh yeah that's that's my pick um and that's that's a great one if you have not signed up for that uh uh that podcast feed or not paid attention to and uh, to it for a little bit um all three hours of the show are now going up immediately. Last week it was it was that night, but was, if not, it's going to be early the next morning. So uh, uh, you, you get the get, full experience on YouTube and the free feeds now. Yeah, right there, and then a bonus show. That's the the new Patreon hook is uh, a full on bonus show for you on Thursday, where. Um, you know that'll be uh, 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 I think the reason for folks to up their pledge to two dollars, which a lot of folks have. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna bring it down a bit, but to celebrate, uh, Richard Donner just passed away. Oh. Oh wow. So uh, my other pick is gonna be the Goonies. Is to go watch the Goonies and you know Richard Donner, who did Superman, Goonies, Lethal Weapon, an amazing career and. Uh, you know, when you watch a Richard Donner film, there's always something special and the characters really pop. So, wow, 91. Uh, yeah, yeah. icon, absolute icon. So, it's been after. There we go. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Weird Things podcast. This will actually be the end of our broadcast day. We are off. Uh, off of Cord Killers this week due to uh, uh, Independence Day. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy, uh, enjoy your week. Way to off. go, America! Way to yeah, go. America. Yes. Um, we will be back tomorrow evening for a great night. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll see what else is going on this week. All right. Well, everybody, good. Yeah. All right. Have a good rest of your Monday, everybody. See ya. See. Ya.